Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I know it's right at two o'clock, so we'll let folks filter in here. And while you are filtering in, as always, please feel free to put your institution's name, mascot, location, anything fun like that in the chat. Uh, we like these to be much more uh, communal. So uh, as folks are coming in, like I said, today's webinar is how to supercharge your communications with data and personalization. I have with me today, Bill Haley and Tom Mikowski from Allied Pixel. Um, we'll do intros here in a second, but again, let folks uh, filter in here for a moment and we will uh, jump right in. But thank you for spending your afternoon with us, not your whole afternoon, but uh, some time with us this afternoon and we can talk about personalization and data and uh, engagement. So thank you so much for joining. Let's see if we had anybody take us up in chat. No one's posting their institution or their mascot in chat. That's okay. Uh, if we have a quieter crowd, that works for us as well. But uh, yeah, if you want to list your alma mater or your institution, where you're located, anything like that, feel free to do that. Um, also, feel free to use chat. Um, you're welcome to use Q&A, but we find that chat is a little bit easier because we like to have more of a dialogue with folks as they're attending. So, very good. Well, I think we'll hop right in. So, uh, legally, this is not a webinar until I use the term housekeeping. So, uh, just a little housekeeping <laughs> before we start today. Um, we're going to talk about three things in particular. Uh, as the name of the presentation would uh, suggest, we're going to talk about using data and personalization to supercharge your communication and really what that means. So, we'll discuss uh, the expectations people have, um, the data we have on that, and really how to execute personalization at a high level to uh, engage with any of your constituents, whether those be prospective students, alumni, current students, et cetera. We will leave plenty of time for questions. Oh, I love it already. We have institutions uh, mentioning uh, themselves here in the chat. Uh, we'll leave plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. Um, so again, please use that chat to put in those uh, questions. So joining me today, uh, we have two folks here from Allied Pixel, Tom Mikowski and Bill Haley. I'm Mike Kuczynski here from Mongoose, but um, Bill and Tom, in that order, why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us what you do with Allied Pixel and who Allied Pixel is? You bet. And uh, Mike, thank you for, for having us on. And we certainly appreciate the, uh, the great partnership with Mongoose. So uh, mm -hmm. glad to be here. Uh, you, you know, people are, are surprised to hear that Allied Pixel has been around for 30 years, actually almost 30 years, 29 to be exact. We were founded in 1993. And we've always focused on, on helping colleges and universities up their game through innovative use of video. Um, and I, I would describe us as a mashup of a video production firm and a tech firm. And these days, probably more and more of a tech firm. Um, but today, we'll talk about data-driven personalized video for enrollment and advancement. Uh, and um, Tom uh, works with schools across the country to build these PV, and PV campaigns. So uh, he's, he will be uh, our tour guide. So Tom? Thanks, Bill. Um, Tom Mikowski, VP of Business Development and Higher Ed Partnerships here at Allied Pixel. Been with uh, Allied Pixel for about three years, but prior to my time with Allied Pixel, I spent 29 years on a college campus. So uh, had seven different positions from admissions rep to VP of enrollment and everything in between. And so um, while I love the cabinet meetings, the budget meetings and things that, that come with enrollment, I was really, um, the, the, bit, the part that I really loved about um, my time at Aquinas was was just the innovation and in bringing innovative things. So whether it's it's virtual tours or things of those natures, that's where I like to spend my, a lot of my time. And so, uh, interestingly enough, I tried to do personalized video while I was at, at Aquinas a few years ago, and, and my marketing team and uh, uh, and staff just said, you know what, this sounds really cool, but we really don't know how to do it. And um, and then I discovered Allied Pixel. I'm like, this is exactly what, what we're looking to do is we're looking to take data to, to really drive um, our communication. So uh, glad to be with you today and uh, really excited to, to walk through this with you. Very good. Well, absolutely mutual. We have two experts with us. Um, should be fantastic. So speaking of experts, um, we have all sorts of stats about personalization and why it matters. So um, for the first three, uh, you know, leading off, McKenzie talks about 76% of consumers expect personalization. By the way, that is not just Gen Z. That's not just millennials. That's all consumers per McKinsey. WordPress says 54% of Gen Z uh, are willing to share personal data. And uh, per Marketo, um, 
website visitors stay on sites with personalization over 300% longer, which is uh, incredible. And then I didn't note it here, but uh, Oregon State um, works with us actually through another partner, and they have done quite a bit of work in personalized solicitation for annual giving, and they've seen a 74% increase in their annual giving uh, gift fulfillment. So there's lots that can be done. Um, Tom, why don't you tell us about some of the, the video stats here as well? Yeah, you know, the, the call to action buttons, right? So, the, you know, the personalization part of the, what we do in video is great, but it's always give, getting that, you know, constituent to the next step, getting that student to, to the next step. And so, you know, HubSpot has said, hey, 202% better, conver better conversions with uh, personalized call to action buttons. Uh, Planable, it also says that 16 times um, higher click to open rate, which is a really a substantial number in the click throughs. And so, so much of, of what we do now is looking at that actual click through more than, more so than even, even open rates. We want to get them, you know, engaged. And so uh, Planable says 4.5 uh, times increasing unique click throughs, which is pretty dramatic. And then because of what we do, and you get eight seconds to, to capture someone's attention. And what we do is, is we do video, right? And so you need to think about, you know, what are you doing, you know, in terms of capturing, you know, using that data to capture a student's attention within those eight seconds. And so ourselves in the video world, we say, how do we do that? And there's many different ways that we can do that. We're going to show you some different ways. Now, certainly seeing your name on screen, is very valuable. Uh, hearing your name and seeing your name on screen is great. And then hearing your name, seeing your name, and seeing somebody actually speak your name. Those are three ways that we really engage uh, students right away during those first eight seconds. And we'll, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. You know, I, I like to think of, of this in terms of storytelling. I'm, I'm an old filmmaker, so it's all about the story to me. And uh, personalized video allows you to, to tell a different story to, to each person, something that's more relevant to them. Uh, so these stories are very dynamic. If we generate 10,000 different videos, each one of them will be unique and it will speak to the interests and the, the, the background of the person who's seeing it. Very cool. Well, thank you, Bill and Tom. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. So what does that mean for all the institutions um, using it today? Well question. Uh, we'll answer it. Um, higher education institutions are, are very unique in that we have so much data we can use. So um, I know Tom in a bit here is going to talk about the applications for video, but um, you know, regardless of if it's email, texting, um, you know, utilizing chatbots, utilizing video, whatever the case might be, we have so much data available to us. Tom, what do you think about the, the data available in higher ed? Yeah. In well, thanks, Mike. When, when it comes to the data, and this just gives you an example, maybe on the enrollment end, right? Not necessarily on the advancement end, there's going to be a, a whole list of other um, data points that you're going to have uh, on, a, uh, on a donor or an alum. But in the enrollment end, you know, we, we want colleges to think about what data do you have? And so this just gives you certainly not all encompassing in your database, but certainly probably a, a lot of that information that you're capturing. Things about a student's academic interest and uh, you know, outcomes, uh, residency status, that student want to live on campus or not, and so on and so forth. And so it's not only thinking about the, the data you have, um, but then at what stage are you communicating to that student in, in this example? So if you're an institution and you're working with students at the search stage, right? Where, where they really don't know a lot about you, you're just capturing information, you're going to have less information about that student. But yet, you can utilize that, that data to really drive the content that you create and drive that messaging, or as like Bill likes to say, the story that, that you're going to tell about your institution. And so if it's at the search stage, you might only have what their academic interest is. You might have what their GPA is. And so maybe you could tell if they're an honors uh, eligible student or not, if they are, you want to deliver a message saying, gosh, with, with your, you know, uh, great academic background, you might be eligible for our honors program. Uh, certainly speaking to the academic interest is really important in enrollment is a part of probably everything that we do. So if a student's interested in business, let's talk about business. Let's not talk about the 160 programs we have. If we know they're coming for business or nursing or science, let's talk about, you know, the, the area that, that they're interested in. 
Um, and then location is something that you would have at the search stage too. You would probably know, you know where you're buying names from in, the, in that search. <clears throat> so if there's somebody who is, I'm in Michigan, so I might want to speak differently from just somebody who's in Michigan versus somebody who might be coming to our area from New York or California or, or somewhere else uh, that might not know about all the great things about, about Grand Rapids, Michigan. So that's, that's at the search stage. And then as that student kind of goes through the enrollment process into an inquiry into an admit, you think about all the information here that you might have on an admitted student. So not only you know, are they going to live on campus or not and their academic interest and, and what their GPA is, but you might know they want to live on campus or, 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 or don't they? So let's leverage that data. Let's speak to those students. We know that if students are uh, commuting to a college campus, they uh, usually retain at a lower percentage. Part of that is because of the messaging you know, you're not getting those messages out to the student about all the great things that you have in terms of being a commuter student right away. So let's leverage that data to, to, to tell that story about uh, that to a commuting student. You'll have more information about maybe financial aid activities. You're, you're gathering all this information about what they're interested in. Well, what are you doing with those data points? If somebody's interested, esports is a real big area that a lot of colleges are using that data point and saying, you know, if they're interested in in esports, let's deliver uh, uh, some content that really speaks to this esports program that we have. Maybe if they're an intercollegiate athletic uh, uh, student, let's communicate to them in that way, and so on and so forth. Certainly, you want to communicate differently for somebody who's a first year student versus somebody who's a, a transfer. But at the end of the day, is using that data to create the content and to, to drive that messaging and create that story that's different for every single student that's out there. And I think it can be a bit overwhelming to, to think about what data to use because most of the schools that we that we work with have got a tremendous amount of information about their students. Um, so what we do is we help them really cherry pick the, the data points that are gonna be most relevant and most valuable to that school to tell their own particular unique story. And, and I think in addition to that, is if I'm putting on my enrollment hat, I'm thinking about where do I need lift as an institution? You know, if I'm looking to get more out of state students, I probably want to use that data point to really tell that message of why it's great to come to, to my college from, an, from outside of the state where my college is. Or if I'm looking to you know, boost the, the number of students who are gonna live on campus, or I need to get more athletes on campus, so on and so forth. So using those data points, but looking at the lift that you need with the data that you have as well. Fascinating. Uh, it's interesting you bring up esports. if I can uh, go on a quick tangent. Um, sure. I typically haven't heard it from our clients, but is it one of the faster growing kind of engagement points that you've seen with your clients? Yeah, it really is. And, and I really, I think it speaks to just how, um, what a dramatic increase in esports, right? I mean, we've seen colleges, I don't have stats in front of me, but, but I would say that the number of schools that have, are offering esports today versus probably two years ago is probably doubled, you know, mm -hmm. three or four years ago, five years ago, maybe tripled. So yeah, it's absolutely something. And, and and colleges are using that to help drive enrollment too. So again, being able to tell that message, is, you know, here's a whole new group of students that you haven't really been hitting. Let's, you know, what is their hot button? Well, they're looking to, to play esports. Yes, they're interested in your biology program, but they also want to take part in, in esports. Right. So why not develop, you know, a video that really speaks to both of those, those facets of their decision making? Good. And Bill, you mentioned uh, cherry picking stats, and I think this chart shows why, right? I mean, if yeah. you tried to put every data point in there, uh, you're, you're going to run out of time, right? Absolutely. Okay. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> the data police are after you. <laughs> uh, Tom, I think you've, you've got the skinny on this uh, on this report. Yeah. So, so this comes from the e expectations um, survey work that that goes out there, and because we're delivering videos, personalized videos, we want to know, you know, where is that, that end point? What is, what is too long? You can have, you know, we looked at that, all those data points there, Mike. Well, 
do you want to create a video? Even if you have 10 data points on somebody, do you want to create a video that, that speaks to 10 different data points? Mm -hmm. You might want to, but you're, you're going to have to realize that that might be a, a seven or eight minute video or 10 minute video if you do that. And so we know uh, through the expectation survey is when you start hitting two minutes in a video, you start losing an eyeball. And this is just regular video, not even personalized video. Personalized video, you're going to capture the attention a little bit more. But then once you hit three minutes, you're going to lose a lot of eyeballs. Um, and especially if you're early on uh, in, in the admissions process. So when we develop videos, we take this data and we say, if we're working with somebody at the search stage who doesn't really know you as an institution, you know, let's make that short. You want to make it impactful, but we're going to make a shorter video in, in a nice teaser to get them interested in the institution. That's usually a minute, minute and a half long. If it's a, uh, a video for an admitted student, somebody who's more invested in you, you could, you could go two to three minutes. We also do like financial aid videos. Well, financial aid, we know that's a huge decision. Right. Well, th that can be a longer video. That actually can be more than more than three minutes, just because of uh, the type of video it is. So, that, so that's the rare occasion where you can kind of exceed that three minutes and kind of so somewhat get away with it because you're actually kind of walking through every piece of their financial aid award offer. So this this gets to the the idea of relevance and and how engaged someone is with your institution. Uh, so like Tom said, someone at the search stage, low engagement. So therefore the video has to be shorter or you'll lose them. Right. Um, someone who has been accepted and is, is now you know looking at their financial aid package, a much higher level of engagement and and relevance. And and as a consequence, uh, the video uh, can and should be um, substantially longer. Makes sense. I'm, I'm curious for both of you, do you find with the rise of the stealth applicant that um, it's not so much the students watching these videos as it is actually the parents, particularly when it when we talk yeah. about the financial aid videos? Yeah, it, absolutely. You know, certainly with the, the parents, when uh, when videos are distributed to parents as well, you're going to see a, even higher engagement, especially with financial aid, right? Because it, because they really have uh, a lot to say. They want to and they want to understand the financial aid uh, award offer. And that's one thing that video does well. And we'll talk more about that is, is being able to explain things in a way that, you know, just reading it on paper can't, you know, it's being able to have a voice in the conversation. I used to tell that to uh, our admissions counselors on, on our staff when I was at Aquinas. It's like, you know, if you can have a voice in the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, it's much more meaningful and you're going to be able to get that student to the next step. And that's really what, what video does. It, it creates that voice in the conversation. Very good. Well, what does data personaliz or data driven personalization look like when it's done well? Well, we'll show you some examples. So first, in terms of texting, um, so we do here at uh, Mongoose, among other things, um, you'll see here in this example, very clear greeting uh, that's personalized. There's a very clear identification of who sent the message, uh, very direct purpose and very direct call to action because we have found that, uh, you know, when you end a message with, um, you know, uh, you know, here's how to go to this link, do this thing. Um, it tends to uh, to maybe confuse students. So being very direct and saying, you know, how may I help you with answering these questions? And if you don't have any questions, you know, please call me or text me or please get this thing done or please go to this particular um, link. And in fact, let's talk about sending links. So um, Ally Pixel is one of our partners and they have sent videos using text and you can send links. You do have to be careful. There are lots of intricacies in terms of sending links. This is probably not the right venue to get into all of those, but if you're ever curious about how to do it the right way, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, Bill and Tom, have you been kind of briefed on that as well? On your oh, yeah. Ends? Yeah, so yeah. you can reach out yeah. to any, all three of us um, yes. about how to do it the right way. But you'll see your Florida Southern, who is a, a fantastic institution, won all sorts of awards for their um, admissions marketing. Um, that is what they do. So, um, Tom, I think it's a good opportunity to show a video. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. So, how do institutions actually execute these videos? Like, what does it look like? And I can click here on the link. And we'll, we'll have you stop when you see close in okay. there. All right. right there, thank you. So, so with this is you have a, and we like to think in the video world kind of is, is a video in different segments, 
right? And so, you know, every video is going to have an intro and it's going to have a closing. And that intro and closing might be the same for each student. So whether we're sending you a video, Mike, or Bill a, a video, those intros and closings could be the same, but what's going to be different is, you know, the, uh, uh, the content in between what we call segments. So again, taking your data, in, in this case, if you've got data on a, on a student's major, data on a student's activity interest, on their residency status, using that data to match up the video clip. So in essence, you know, what we do is, is we create this content um, and then we take the data and then we'll, we'll match it up with the content that we've created within each of those different segments. And then at the end of the day, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take that and then we'll streamline it together and create one seamless video. And so, you know, it, if you've got three different segments in what we say 15 sequences or 15 video clips of, of, of these different things, we're actually creating 125 different videos. Oh, and as wow. Bill said, you know, if you're communicating with 10,000 people, you want to make sure all 10,000 people get a, a different video. Sure. And basically what we're doing, in addition to the personalization with their name, the content of that video could be 125 different variations of content uh, just based on what we create. And again, based on the on the data that you have. So we want to make this, this is going to be somewhat, you know, polished and professional, right? There's going to be some scripting and things like that, but we want it to be authentic um, and again, using different data points, depending on the, on the stage of enrollment that that student is in. So using all these segments, are you still under two minutes or would this yeah. be pushing it with all these particular segments? Yeah. On the yeah, under, th under three minutes. And so that, that's a really um, good question. So while the technology exists mm -hmm. that you could take 12 data points, right? We don't want an eight minute video. And so, right. so, so we always say best case use of this is really three, up to three segments. So we'll have colleges that will use those full three segments and that will get you somewhere between a minute and a half and three minute video, depending on the script. And again, not every video is the same, right? So you're using these three, three different assets, but you know, Mike, if you're majoring in business, you're interested in esports, and you live in state, they're gonna be completely different than, than Bill who's interested in the arts, who is uh, you know, going to be a, on the soccer team, and uh, and who lives out of state. And we can also delete segments too. So for example, if a student has no interest in sports, we're just not even gonna show the sports segment. So the length of the video will also be variable based on the interests of the student. Makes all sense. Mm -hmm. Good, well, let's talk about a uh, search one here. Now, admittedly, I'm not the most technical uh, person. So <laughs> I believe I have skewed or, uh, um, synced up the audio here, but um, this is from VC, right? Virginia Commonwealth, Richmond. Virginia. It is, so let's, let me cue this up on here. Yeah. So uh, again, you've got eight seconds to, to really make an impact. And so with them, we, you know, not, not only are they seeing their name on screen, but they're hearing their name as well. Not every college does that. And we'll show an example where colleges puts the name on screen. It's really up to the college on, on how they wanna do it. But we ingested the information. This was at the search stage. So what I had talked about earlier, we, we know that that student said that they're interested in engineering. We know that that student has a high GPA. And I think VCU used, used a threshold of 3.75 or higher. So at 3.75, they, they were eligible for high honors. So we're going to serve them up a, a segment saying, hey, with high academic honors like yours, so listen for that. You know, you, you may be a part of our, our honors program. If Let's say that student said they had a 3.25 GPA. You know, that particular segment would really talk about the mentoring programs and, and, you know, all the support systems they have in place to help that student through the process. And so they also uh, created a, 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 uh, all their academic areas. This one's engineering. So data says engineering. We're serving up engineering. And then created all these different clips based on their academic interest. So when I'm an engineering, engineering student, I want to hear about the engineering program. Sure. But then there's a clip that really speaks to the internships within the engineering program. If I was a business program or so business student, I would be hearing about you know, the opportunities within the business program and the internship. So it's a quick hitter because here again, it's at the search stage, but um, I think it does a good job of utilizing the, the data. Very good. Out of curiosity, before I start, how long is the process? You fly down to Richmond, Virginia. Um, I'm sure you take some video. 
um, do some voiceover? Like how long does that process of actually gathering the clips? That's a really good question. The vast majority of schools that we work with, we use their existing photo and video assets and repurpose them. Uh, that being said, we do work with some institutions. We're a full service video production company. And so, you know, sometimes schools will be like, you know what, we need more video. Can you come to campus? And we'll come for a one day photo shoot or a, or a video shoot or a two day video shoot. So it just, uh, it varies by, uh, by institution. Cool. Well, let's look what the Rams were doing. Hi, Daniela. It's different here at Virginia Commonwealth University. We know it, we welcome it, and we thrive on it. Located in Richmond, Virginia, you'll have a mix of historic, artsy, and food-obsessed activities at your fingertips, and more than 400 student organizations to join. And with high academic standards like yours, you can apply to our Honors College, where you'll find scholarship and fellowship opportunities and build a foundation for future success. At Virginia Commonwealth University, we embrace diversity and inclusion and recognize our differences as assets. Here you can be yourself or figure out who you want to be. VCU's College of Engineering is a front runner in academics and combines real world education with breakthrough research in a variety of engineering fields. At VCU, you'll gain critical knowledge through service learning projects, independent research and experiential learning. As an engineering student, you'll partake in local research projects and have the chance to intern for impressive companies like Dominion Energy, Altria, and Suez Water Technologies. Research and creativity are two of our greatest strengths here at VCU, and they'll be a part of your education no matter what field you pursue. So bring us your boldest ideas, your most unconventional ideas, and your best ideas. This is where you make it real. Very nice. So uh, did I hear spoken name? I'm not sure if I did. I know I saw you it. Did. You did, yeah. Okay, so we heard spoken name. Uh, we definitely saw the high honors, like you said, saw engineering. The piece about finding yourself, would, would all students get that or was that specifically targeted to Daniela in this case? Yeah, that, that, that piece was really everyone, you know, that, that ending piece. So certainly, you know, in, in terms of developing a video, you've got those variable data points, right, that you're going to build out. Um, but then there's also just general interest points that, that you might uh, utilize in the video as well. So, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I'd love to hear what the chat thinks about it. So, very good. All right. So, uh, let's talk about uh, admit. And this is uh, St. Joe's, I believe, correct? Yes. And, and this is an admitted student video. And this is probably as long as you want. And actually, St. Joe's did, did trim this probably back to about two and a half minutes uh, recently. But this is a, a three minute video. I like to show this too, because when we think about using data again, uh, especially in the video format, you got to think about you know, how long you can keep someone's attention. And so this is really like the longest that you would want to go in using, you know, three strong data points, but also, uh, you know, using information that, you know, because they're an admitted, admitted student and they're more engaged with the institution, there's more information that you want to give to the student as well. Very good. Let's take a look at the Hawks. Congratulations on your acceptance to St. Joseph's University. St. Joseph's University is a community built on and. We're passionate and purposeful, strong and resilient, future focused and ready for everything, just like you. At St. Joe's, we follow the proud Jesuit tradition of revolutionary thought. You'll learn how to push limits, break boundaries and solve any challenges that lie ahead. The AACSB Accredited Hobb School of Business offers programs directly tied to industry trends. You'll develop ethical decision-making and critical thinking skills. Learn how to interpret and analyze data and learn from experts in their fields. You'll be prepared to make your mark on the business community and the world. With over 17 majors, top-ranked undergraduate programs, and co-op and internship experiences available, you'll graduate with the skills to prepare you for the future of business. Well over half of the class of 2019 graduated with a double major, or a major and minor, and over 97% were employed full-time, or in graduate school within six months of graduation. Plus, more than 80% of our students pursue experiential learning, gaining real-world experience as a student. 
But there's so much more happening at St. Joseph's University than what goes on inside the classroom. Take your eSports game to the next level at our brand new eSports lab, complete with 24 high-end gaming stations that come with sound panels, customizable lighting, ergonomic chairs, and even a coaching station. And with academic coursework and a club sport team, you'll score in-demand skills for an exciting future in the billion-dollar-a-year gaming industry. Plus, you'll live in the city of brotherly love itself, Philadelphia. Our 125-acre campus is part city and part suburb, offering all the energy of vibrant city life and peaceful charm of the surrounding historic suburbs. And as the sixth largest city in the country, Philadelphia has plenty to offer. From vibrant cultural centers to rich historical sites, exciting national sports teams and global headquarters, our connection to the city will lead you to find yourself academically, professionally, and personally. And the sky's the limit. With easy access to transportation, we'll connect you to other metropolitan areas like New York City, Boston, and Washington, D.C. We can't wait to meet you and see just how you define success. Come visit our campus and discover your and. Very nice. So one thing I noticed right off the bat, we were 30 seconds in before we mentioned the academic interest. Is that typical? Is that a little long? How does that compare? Yeah, you know, um, every, you know, every video project is different, Mike. And so it really depends on the institution and when they want to deliver that. Sometimes you'll, you'll see uh, academic interest be like in the first 15 seconds. Right. Uh, we, uh, we work with some schools where, um, where we'll just ingest majors. We see this at the graduate level a lot, right, where we use inquiry forms to drive video. So, so we can do these things in batch where, you know, uh, colleges send us thousands of students at a time and we'll generate the videos. But we also can do it on demand and, uh, and take an inquiry form or an applicant form that, that, that you have. We find this a lot at the graduate student level. And because at the graduate student level, you're not capturing information like, you know, their interest, their activity right. interest and those kind of things. You're really, they're really focusing on the academic program. And so for those videos, it's like, yeah, let's get into the academics right away. Makes sense. And because the student in this case has been admitted, um, obviously they've had to have done an inquiry and they've had to apply to get admitted. Um, that's why we're seeing more time spent on the on-campus experience as well, I would imagine. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's exactly right. We want, to, we want to build some student life in there. We want to build in you build in value props on top of these data points. So these are great data points. You're going to create, you know, value props within these data points, but you're also going to have other value props of the institution that you want to make a part of your video, especially for somebody's at the, at the admit stage. Now, I'm very curious uh, for both of you too. I noticed they mentioned the connection to other cities on the East Coast. I would think if I was a VP of enrollment at St. Joe's. My goal would be to keep as many people in Philly at St. Joe's as possible. I don't want them touring Rose Hill and Fordham. I don't want them going up to Chestnut Hill and Boston College or to Georgetown. Like, what was the what was the thinking kind of behind the the East Coast corridor there? Yeah, just because there's a there's a lot happening on that yeah. that East Court, a lot of activity, and so you know. Um, the way that they did this, they, you know, they had the in-state version, and I think they might even have an East Coast version, and then they had this out-of-state version. So they're like three different parts of the country. And, and this was like out-of-state. So for me, living in Grand Rapids, right, I might not know, I might know Philadelphia, but I might really not know the proximity, you right. know, that Philadelphia is to all these other great cities and how easy it is to, to get there. And so that's certainly, you know, a story that you want to tell those students. Uh, that aren't familiar with the East Coast at all. Well, when we, I'm sorry, when we, uh, whenever we start one of these projects, we, the first thing we do is we have a kickoff meeting with mm -hmm. the school. And uh, at that time, we really drill down on the messaging and it, it is truly different for each school. So, you know, we, we talk about what are the priorities, what are the key points that we want to get across and, and also what are the order that we want to get them in. So in this case, for St. Joe's, that was what, you know, that was that was the consensus for other schools, it might be different. Right, very interesting. So the in-state video, and sorry to, to belabor that, I find it fascinating and I think mm -hmm. our viewers might as well. 
um, for the in-state video and for the East Coast video then, is the message still about the connection to those cities and your ability to you know, still be close enough to visit family or how would that be slightly different? Right, it, you know, again, it depends on the institution, but a, a lot of times it's like, you know, we're in your backyard, you know, and, and uh, although you might know us, did you know X, Y, Z? And so sometimes it's, it's um, uh, maybe, you know, uh, making sure that a particular message goes out that, you know, hey, look, at we know a lot of people, you know, may not come here because it's too close, but let's, right. let's tell you, in addition to just the location, here are these other great things that you really need to think about. They already know about the, the East Coast, the proximity things, but what are those other key value props mm -hmm. that would, would keep somebody in Philadelphia? And so that's what that scripting would be, is really those value props is being an institution in your own backyard, why it makes sense to stay close at home and why you can have a world-class education outside your back door. Right. As somebody from Philly, uh, you know, it, 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 not everyone realizes how what what how how interesting this region is. Hmm. Uh, we're two hours to New York, two hours to D.C., two hours to the beach, two hours to skiing, uh, and um, you know I, I think you know that is a, a significant selling point for for all of the schools in in the Philadelphia region. And uh, for those outside that area, they they may not quite realize that. Makes a lot of sense. Very good. Well, let's talk. Uh... Financial aid. So we mentioned, uh, Tom, this will be the longest video probably, correct? Yeah, th there's, yeah. these are really the longest um, videos that we do. And this is like personalization and data points on steroids. <laughs> and so uh, just some great information in here. You're going to see what these financial aid video offers that we ingest all this data on a student's financial aid package. Mm -hmm. Everything about you know, what aid they're getting for merit institutional aid, state aid, federal aid, and you know, having scenes that can, can kind of communicate each of those pieces uh, to the student. And so we know that, um, especially with financial aid offers, you know, people are confused, especially first gen, right? First time through the process, they don't really understand. They saw, see all these numbers on a paper and they're just trying to figure out, well, subsidize and unsubsidized, what does that mean? What about payment plans? What about this and that? And they don't really understand it all. And so again, getting a voice in the conversation, keeping consistent messaging, using the, the data also like to calculate things. And so this is where the kind of uh, personalization on steroids, take all this data in and ingest it and then do calculations in there. And so that you can deliver, you know, payment plans and things like that. So students can exactly see uh, what the expectation is. And then in addition to the financial aid offer, so these are a little bit longer because they're, they're value props that we want to put in there. Uh, I know from my time, you know, 15 years ago uh, when I was at Aquinas, you know, we were doing, you know, black and white, you know, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, nice. and here's your financial aid award, and here's a, you know, here's a little booklet and kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then I would say probably about, maybe eight years ago when I was at Aquinas, we, we kind of said, okay, we, we need some value props, right? Th this is when the student's making their final decision. Yes, we want to tell them what it costs, but we also want to you know, remind them of the value mm -hmm. uh, of choosing our institution. And so uh, we created like a four color brochure. And so that four color brochure had a lot of those value props. Now this is the next evolution that I really think Mike that it's almost like document imaging many years ago. I remember being in a, in a committee meeting and uh, I was in charge of this whole document imaging thing. And I said, well, how important it was for our staff to really have access to information no matter where they were in the country. They need to have access to information. I remember uh, an advisor who'd been around for about 30 years at the college said, you know, that's a great time, but we don't really, do we need that? You know, I like going to the filing cabinet and pulling that, you know, their file open and seeing everything about the student, you know, when I go to that filing cabinet, it's like, no, you know, we are going to get there. And the, the same with this financial aid video, um, because we are in the YouTube generation, TikTok generation, they want to consume video. Everyone's going to get here. It's just a matter of you're going to be, a, you know, um, uh, you know, more on the forefront of it, or you're going to be a, a, a laggard, but, uh, but, but putting those value props, is so important. So you're going to see it here with, with Texas A&M. Yes, communicate that financial aid offer, but then 
let's throw in some value props. And one of the value props that, that they chose was this, about a student's academic major. So reminding them about the engineering program uh, that they have. Yeah. This particular video, we can do you know, custom scenes too. So if you wanna message out to somebody who's first gen or somebody who's a legacy student, you know, all those kind of things uh, we can put into the video as well. Great. So I will let you yeah. pop that and away we go. Howdy, Thomas. Congratulations on your admission to Texas A&M University. From academic excellence to selfless service, we're a home to the leaders of tomorrow and a community deeply rooted in traditions. This video contains important information about your financial aid offer and future. Let's see how your offer applies to your estimated cost of attendance for the 2021-2022 academic year. Your financial aid offer is over $19,000. Let's begin by reviewing your grants and scholarships. You've been awarded a merit-based scholarship in recognition of your academic achievements. It totals $11,000. Please see your offer letter for renewal details. You have been awarded the following institutional grant. The total is over $1,000. This represents an additional investment from us and does not need to be repaid. Additionally, you have been awarded other grants and scholarships. They total over $1,000 and do not need to be repaid. This brings your total gift aid or money you don't need to repay from scholarships and grants to $14,000. This covers over 90% of your tuition and fees at Texas A&M. You are eligible to receive federal direct loans. Your subsidized loan portion does not accumulate any interest while you are enrolled. Interest will start accruing six months after graduation or if you drop below half-time enrollment. Contrary to your subsidized loan, your unsubsidized loan starts accruing interest as soon as the funds are dispersed into your student account. Payments for both loans are not due until after graduation or if you drop below half-time enrollment, and repayment plans vary based on your individual needs. To obtain these loans, you must complete entrance counseling, sign your master promissory note, and complete an annual student loan acknowledgement online at studentaid.gov. Bringing it all together, here are your remaining costs, showing your estimated remaining cost before and after utilizing loan options for the upcoming academic year. Also, remember that in addition to the costs you will pay directly to the university, you will have additional expenses, such as books and supplies and other miscellaneous educational expenses. We understand that affordability is important, which is why we offer options for you and your family to cover the balance due. You can pay your balance in full at the beginning of the semester or enroll in one of our installment plans. Aggies commit to learning for a lifetime. Whatever you dream, you can pursue it as an Aggie. Our College of Engineering is consistently ranked among the top 10 public engineering programs in the United States, with nearly 700 faculty and a dedication to equipping our students with the best educational experience imaginable. As a student, you'll learn firsthand by solving real-world problems. Engineers are in demand now more than ever before. Contact us with any questions or to finalize your enrollment or visit admissions.tamu.edu slash advisors to contact your advisor directly. As a Texas A&M student, you'll carry the Aggie spirit and our core values far beyond graduation. Now's the time to confirm your enrollment by registering for a new student conference by clicking on the link below. Welcome to the Fightin' Texas Aggie class of 2025. Well, Tom, first of all, congratulations on being accepted <laughs> at Texas a &M. Thank you so much. You'll be a great hey. member of the 12th man there. <laughs> just, just two really quick points on that um, video. One is you saw that there weren't like payment plans that were actually a part of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's many schools that we work with. I would say the majority of uh, schools that we work with will have like, if they've got three different payment plans, we will actually do a calculation in that video for if you do a, you know, a four month payment plan, an eight month payment plan, a 10 month payment plan, here's here's what those um, payments would be. And those also staff contact, you know, Texas A&M just decided to put a, a general piece of information in there. But for, for many institutions, they, they get assigned, especially the smaller institutions, you're gonna get assigned uh, an admissions counselor, right? right? 
And so you've got that data in your system. In many schools that we work with, we'll actually put a picture uh -huh. of the admissions counselor on screen with their email, with their phone number, you know, saying contact your, your uh, counselor for more information or any questions that you have. And so again, that next level of personalization, make that connection. So this is not meant to replace the offer letter, but it, it, it sort of accompanies the offer letter, um, but it humanizes it. And, right. and you can see that it, it also um, is a really powerful marketing piece for the school too. And I loved the breakdown of how much it actually covers and then covering what is grant versus loan and aid. Uh, really well done. Um, now I noticed we were three minutes in before we, we started talking about I believe it was College of Engineering and the Aggie experience. Yes. That I would imagine it has kind of you have to do it because there's just so much information on the front end with financial. Aid. Yeah, you, you know, it, the purpose of the the video is is the financial aid award, right. right? And so the expectation is if you're sending me a financial aid offer video, you know, we, we want to make sure that that student stays engaged through it. If all of a sudden they just see engineering right from the get go, we're like. No, you know, they, they might not get to the financial aid offer. So th this is the most important part of that video. So let's let's tell them right away, here's your financial aid package. This is what you can receive. And then let's break it down for them. Very good. Fantastic. Well, what is the uh, the impact then of these videos then, Tom, from what you've seen? Yeah, we, we've really seen just, uh, you know, tremendous ROI, you know, admitted students when we've done the analysis, anywhere between five to 12 times more likely to enroll for those students who viewed their personalized enrollment video uh, for the, our financial aid clients. Uh, they are seeing an increase. And we know in enrollment, right, that every 1% of lift you get in yield is really substantial. And what's right. interesting is looking at all the institutions and the financial aid award videos, we have an exclusive partnership with, with RNL in creating those and looking at all their, you know, uh, uh, institutions they work with, the ones that have you know, a financial aid video and the ones that do not, the, the, uh, the colleges that are sending out these personalized financial aid videos are actually seeing a yield. And this is just as of a couple of weeks ago, Mike, so it's really fresh data, but they're seeing yield of over 3% higher than those institutions that are not using it. And I think part of it is, you know, that messaging that, that they're getting, telling the, the story, you know, when that student is, is making their final decision. Makes total sense. Well, good. Mike, sometimes I, I love to, to, to see comments that come come to the schools from the students or even their, their parents. Uh, uh, you know, they're anecdotal, but uh, they tell a lot. And w one note that we got was from uh, uh, the parent of an admitted student at Gordon College. And that's, that parent wrote, other colleges seriously need to step up their game if they want to be as cool as Gordon. So wow. I just love getting notes like that. And, and uh, uh, a lot of the schools that we work with do tell us that personalized video is, is a real differentiator for them. Well, fantastic. That's great to hear. Now, folks might be wondering, well, Mike, you know, Mongoose makes, you know, chat bots and has live chat. Um, if I gave you an example of a chat playbook, it would be a disaster. Um, so if you're curious about that, want to know more about live chat and our chat bot options, the playbooks we build, um, they are successful, they work well, but, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me, I can give you more information on that. I debated putting from, uh, if there's any It's Sunny in Philadelphia fans, I debated putting the, the Charlie Day, um, you know, back, or the uh, the cork board behind me, but uh, I didn't do that. But uh, they're very intricate. There's lots of ways you can use them. So today's not the best time to uh, to talk about those. But if you'd like to learn more, certainly reach out. So uh, wrapping up because you know we've got about ten minutes uh, left. Um, you know, folks expect personalization. Um, you should use data to drive that personalization. You shouldn't just blast things out. Uh, it should be authentic. Um, you know, we saw revelry at the uh, Texas a and football game there. Uh, we didn't see the Hawk uh, at St. Joe's, which I thought was, uh, was interesting, but um, certainly polished. And, uh, you know, Tom, how many seconds do we have to make an impression again? Eight. Eight <laughs> seconds. Eight seconds, yeah. Yeah, so quick. Yeah, so uh, regardless of the channel or the media you're using, uh, absolutely make 
every message counts. So um, I think this is a great opportunity for questions and answers. Um, I see some folks have asked about recordings. We will absolutely leave, uh, we'll make sure we send uh, those out to you. I believe if you have done a registration, um, you will automatically get a copy. Lexi, are you on and can confirm that? Maybe she can in the comments. I believe, I believe by registering, we are sending you a copy. Um, so pretty sure. And if not, I will, um, I can look up folks' emails. Yes, okay, Lexi says recordings will go out to everyone registered, so that's good. Um, let's see, what else do we have? A couple. Um, Catherine had asked questions about texting. I believe we covered that. Um, so you want there to be identification we, uh, both ways. We want there to be greetings. We want the message to be very purposeful. So um, we don't love when clients blast out uh, messages to their students, parents, faculty, staff, alumni. It should be very targeted, right? So that purpose is part of um, targeting that message to people and there should be a clear call to action. Jennifer asked, how long does it take to create personalized financial aid videos, uh, experiences for admitted students? What yeah, it's, it's about a 10 to 12 week process, mm -hmm. um, depending on, you know, everything that they're utilizing. One of the things we, we do, Mike, I, I didn't talk about is um, we have the ability to do this in Spanish, too. So like that, mm -hmm. you know, you can take a financial aid video and as they're watching the video and they say, you know what, um, we, we want to see that in Spanish. We could actually create a, a Spanish version as well. Very nice. Very good. Well, Jennifer, thank you for your questions. Um, we still have plenty of time for more questions if uh, folks want to use the chat function. I'll also look under uh, questions and answers. I know sometimes, nope, nothing there. Um, One of the things on, on the personalization, and forgive me if I already mentioned this, but you yes. know, we, we do have, so you, know, you saw in the videos, uh, the spoken name, you, you've seen just the name on screen, you've seen the name on screen with the spoken name. Uh, one example that I, I did not show um, today is actually, you know, having somebody on screen speaking the name, right? And so we, we do have a perfect example of this is getting a president on screen verbalizing their first name. So if a president of an institution is saying, congratulations, Mike, on your admission to, you know, XYZ College, there, th that eight seconds is really pretty dynamic when the president is, uh, is on the screen, so... And it's interesting you bring up the president because I think a lot of times when I work with institutions, they're nervous about the president doing these sorts of activities. They're like, well, you know, they got to, they got to fly to Switzerland to raise money or, you know, do what presidents do. <laughs> yeah. uh, they have to yeah. deal with trustees. But I find that that presidents, when they know that technology is out there to help them, you know, meet their enrollment goals, like they'll yes. jump at it. There but, are a handful of presidents that text. Um, I will say, I, I don't know if the institutions want me to, to disclose um, their secret sauces, so I won't get into that too much, but it, it's been done. Um, and good to hear about video. I think that makes a lot of sense for presidents. And it's not a heavy lift because they're, they're basically lift, they're, they're reading names, right? Right. right. They are. It's, it's, uh, it's actually pretty easy. And, and uh, usually when a president sees one of these videos, they're, they're very um, enthusiastic to, to help out, but um, it's a it's usually about a two hour commitment uh, for them to to read the names. It's not hard at all. Very good. It'll be practice for uh, for graduation. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another question that comes up a lot is is distribution, and you know, we, we talked about texting. Um, our philosophy, I think, is that we want to reach them where they're at, uh, whether it's uh, the student or whether it's the parent. Uh, so texting and certainly using the, the Mongoose platform is fantastic. Uh, but these videos also can be sent out via email and, and also will typically live on a student portal. So um, there are multiple ways to get these videos out into the world. Mm -hmm. There was a question, Mike, too, about, you know, call to action ones. So you didn't see it with the video because we were just showing the, the video. But, but that video will live on, on a landing page. It'll be a, branding, a branded page to the institution. And then within that branded landing page, there will be call to action buttons. So not just letting somebody look at a video and then you never know where they go is like get them to that next step. And then, then we measure that out. But if it's an inquiry video, you wanna get them to apply. If they're an admitted video, you want to get them to deposit and so on and so forth. Very good. I love it. Well, again, we still have a few minutes. Uh, if there's any other questions now is the time to ask them away. But, um, you know, if for some reason you, you just you're tied up with stuff today, uh, Bill and Tom, what's the best way for folks to reach out to you? 
Yeah, and I think at the end of the presentation here, we've got our email ad addresses. That's really the, probably the best way to go, Mike, in terms of um, getting a hold of us. Admittedly, I changed that slide, so sorry. I'll put that <laughs> sorry. back up for folks. My bad. That's okay. That's me. So there we go. There's our information if you need. Um, there we go. Yeah. Anything else from today? Um, someone had just asked, do you have analytics on whether the video was watched um, or how long the video was watched for? We somehow yeah. glossed over that whole topic, which is yeah. a, a huge piece of personalized video, um, but all of that data is is captured. Uh, and uh, there's a, a dashboard that's available to the school um, that in real time, you can see the performance of the of the videos, both on a, a macro scale and a micro scale, seeing each one individually. And Tom, you, you can probably, I'm sure, provide a lot more uh, detail yeah. on that. Yeah, and you can download that data too, Mike. So if um, you know, you've got a list of 500 people that have, have watched the video and you want to download that and put that into your um into your system, that engagement in your system, you can uh, simply download that and uh, extract it and put it right into your system. Very good. When you say system, CRM we're talking about? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Well, again, still a few more minutes if you have questions. People no sometimes deal. ask about the, just the process because I know it, it can seem um, overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, to put together one of these campaigns and truly it is not. Um, we are very, sensitive of how busy the, the enrollment and advancement offices are. Um, and um, Allied Pixel really does most of the heavy lifting in, in putting these campaigns together. Um, we have a dedicated producers that have expertise in, in higher education um, that really shepherd the project through from start to finish. And uh, certainly Tom is involved in every project too with his you know many years of, of experience uh, in higher ed. Very good. There was a question, Mike, about you know new programs. What if you you have new programs? And this happens all the time. We'll work with a client, and we're doing you know we've got you know x number of, of programs that that we'll put a video on, and then and then they're going to you know start a new program in X Y Z, and then we simply will we'll just you know create content for that specific program, and then we'll just add it into the queue, and then you know stuff gets sent out with that additional academic program in. Also staff changes. So with our financial aid videos, uh, especially, right, they want to make that connection, you know, with a, maybe not, not necessarily on the search stage to make a connection with the admissions counselor, but certainly at the admit stage and the financial aid offer, if you've got questions. And so uh, we, we actually um, have, you know, all the staff people listed and all their contact information. Let's say a staff member leaves and gets, or gets replaced, or you add a staff member, in the, in the process of that delivery. It's simply taking one out and adding one in, and it, it's a really quick exchange uh, of that information uh, with the video, because all we need really is a headshot and the contact information, and then it just uh, it, it flows very easily. So pretty pretty easy change to make on our end. And that happens all the time. I mean, these, these are really meant to be living uh, documents, uh, and they, they do change over time. Many of the schools that we work with are, are doing multi-year programs. So, you know, as things change, we adjust to them and it, it's really quite seamless. Very good. Well, I think that's our last question for the day. So uh, again, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Bill and Tom, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, setting this up with us. I had a fantastic uh, time hosting. And again, thank you for viewing. We will get the recordings out. Um, anything else you'd want to leave with our uh, audience today, Bill or Tom? Um, I think, you know, if you're interested in, in learning more about this, um, please come on our website. There's, there's a wealth of information and other samples of, of projects that we've done for other schools. Um, we do have a, a 30 minute um, really sort of show and tell presentation that sort of goes a little further than what we've done today uh, that will answer all of your questions. So, you know, please do reach out to Tom or, or myself and we would love to talk with you and how, how this could benefit your school. And the last thing I would lead you with is um, just, you know, what we what we can bring you as, as an institution is, you know, my 30 years of enrollment experience, Bill's been doing video production for 30 years, we have a VP of technology who's been doing it 30 years. And so being able to bring all three of those facets together into into a personalized video project like this is uh, really meaningful. Um, but, uh, but I thank you for your time, Mike, and I, I hope your uh, uh, listeners 
and your audience here um, learned a lot, but we're, we're certainly available at any time. Just, just reach out to us and we'd, we'd love to work with about 100 colleges around the country or over 100 colleges around the country. So we'd be happy to talk to you more. Very good. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much again thank for you. everyone attending. We will get you those recordings and uh, appreciate you spending some time this afternoon with us. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.